Hey guys, welcome to TGS. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look over this. This is a Browning B125, and this particular one is a B. So as I said, this is a Browning B125 B grade. There are four grades of later B125, as well as earlier 125s, but we'll cover that in a minute. So just to establish what this is, this is a 1987 Browning B125B. Let's have a little look over it. So defining features of a 125 is that you have a B25 style forehead, so that the gun is a two piece gun. So as you can see, those bits come down, the gun opens up and off it comes. At the back, you have a Browning fitted plastic keel plate. You have American walnut stock. So yeah, well you can see the, the obvious flaming, the red color, an American walnut stock, which is a typical Japanese Browning thing, but this being a crossover, well, there you go. You have a long trigger guard with the Browning buck mark on the top there. And here is where they all differ grade to grade. And hopefully in the future we will cover some of the other grades if we can get them all in hand. But for now, uh, this being a B grade. The B grade is not an exciting looking gun at all. The C's and the D's, they are actually quite nice. So the engraving on this one is B grade engraving. It is unexciting and unimaginative in, in as, as much as it can go really. Uh, you are hand engraved. So if you look very closely, you can actually see the little chatter lines going through all of the engraving here. Although it is done just a straight line, no contouring, no uh, flash cutting, anything like that. You get the odd little bit here. Um, let me get the pointer. You get the odd little bit here and here, and it just gives you a little bit more of an exciting sort of diamond cut look. But for the most of it, it is an unexciting, fairly flat looking engraving. So you have a duck, a mallard duck, and in the background, which actually is quite cute, three little ones. Apart from that, the action is plain, except for these small little stamped border pieces here. And as you can see, well, they kind of go up and down and up and down, and that is a hand engraved gun for you there, or a handmade gun, uh, which you don't get all the time with other things. You have a tiny little hand engraved swirly border around the back. You have Acanthus leading you up onto the fences there and very simple very very simple designs across the course here of the top lever Chrysanthemum-esque thing there On the off side of the action a partridge a three little partridge in the distance and again It repeats the same fairly simple design on this side. You have simple reeds and on this side. You have a simple cliff face I mean, it, it's interesting, it's nice, it's pleasant, it's not unpleasant. However, if you're into flashy looking guns, a B grade is not for you. You have to go up into the higher grades and you then get more time spent on engraving. And this really is one of those guns that actually you can get great value for money because the difference in price between a B grade, a C grade, a D grade is minimal. And yet the hours extra of hand engraving is, well, optimal if you were a buyer nowadays. It's one of the very interesting things to, to behold that back then the price differences were not that great but you were getting huge amounts more for your money. Nowadays those, those price splits between extras is vast and yet you're only, where, with a laser engraved gun only getting a little bit extra for your money which is interesting. Um, not that that's wrong, it's just the way the world's gone which is fine. But as I said, very simple engraving. The stocks are all hand checkered, come with this pistol grip. It's, it's very nice, very pleasant. So the whole point of one of these really was to produce a Belgium gun at less money. And they've kind of reinstated that with the B25 or the B25 Beecham, I think it is now, in that you can get a Japanese action and a load of the work is done in Japan and then it's sent to Belgium for finishing. Which, as I said, I can kind of get behind that. I'm not a big fan of the B grade, it's a bit simple for me. Um, but I can still appreciate that it is a still a work of art that is well beyond my technical capabilities to do myself. 
The forewind again is made of American walnut. You have a slight schnabel at the front there. Nice hand checkering. It's quite coarse. It's coarser than you'll find on B25s. And again, that attached forewind. And that attached forewind just comes off if you need the little single slot screw head in there. Take that off and the whole thing will fall off in your hands. The best bit about these over and above anything else is that they are running Maruku ejector work. Um, so you are getting that as a benefit over your standard B25 ejector work, which is less good. Um, and not that you don't get that now, but this gun being 1907, they actually came out in 1983. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the history, I suppose, whilst we're at this point. So the history goes, in 1983, Browning came out with this, the B125. Originally, there was only one grade, and it was this. It had no name, but it is later to be known as the B grade, uh, this gun here. It was said that this gun was actually built to replace the B25, but that actually never came to pass, which is quite a nice thing, seeing as this is not really a B25. It is the best of both worlds, but it is also not quite a B25 Browning, but it is a very nice Maruku. Let's kind of, I know I've said that a couple of times now, but that's by the by. So this is the bridge between the B25 and the Maruku. Imagine at the time, the Satori was still non-existent, or the 325 as we know it, was still non-existent in 1983. And it was only just about to come to the fore. So this was Browning's first attempt at making a production level gun of, you know, relatively affordable price. It was the first Browning over and under to involve multi-chokes, uh, as we now call them in vector chokes. Uh, and this was like the test bed of, it was like the step down from a 25 before they took the step down to a 325. None of these are step downs, and I should point that out that they are all very, very solid guns, but some are just more solid than others. The real sad thing about the B125 is they never really took off in any great deal. A gun that was built by Maruku in the white, well, back in the 80s they faced a certain level of xenophobia or a certain disdain towards Japanese guns and they weren't, in terms of purism, a proper Belgian Browning. And that's just they took a little bit of convincing that people should buy them. People, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because it would be, for example, if Beretta went to Turkey and got them to make a cheap gun for them, everyone would go, yeah, but I wouldn't have it, even if it was made exactly, exactly the same. It's, a, it's an interesting dichotomy that nowadays we look at this and you go, yeah, Browning's are made in Japan, but back then that just was not the case. This gun was built in the white, and when I say in the white, the stock would have been semi-finished, the action would have been just a finished, clean action, it would have been assembled to a certain extent, or at least had all the parts ready for assembly and regulated. Eject word finished. Everything would have been finished-ish. Then in Belgium, checkered, engraved, blued, polished, and sort of finished to that Belgium hand-finished perfection that we asked for in a B25. But it never really caught on. And here's the, here's the interesting thing. It never caught on for the main reason that if somebody wanted to buy a more expensive Browning, they would still probably buy a B25. And at the time, there was still a huge fashion for B25 custom. So buying a B25 B2G or a B25A1, sorry, and sending it off to Belgium to be turned into a B2G or a custom side plate or anything. And it was quite reasonable to do that. So that was option one. And then option two is that very shortly after the 325 and the Satori's hit the market in their modern format, and four pence by comparison to one of these, certainly. And hence, as much as they did keep going, they were never hugely popular. They have this cult following though, and rightfully so, and it's rightfully earned, that you can own a hand-finished, Belgium-finished Maruku, and nowadays these guns, I mean, they're all, they're all under two grand, really. You might find an absolute spanker that tops that, but you can pick up a pretty tatty uh, B-grade or lightweight for, what? <laughs> under a thousand pounds for a hand finished Belgium finished Maruku that to me is very interesting uh, whether that's interesting to you I don't know because they are you know certainly in the B grade not that pretty but I would probably say that this is a more honest simple engraving that the like that you get on a new B25 which is just cut by a machine at least this is done by hand it's a difficult one isn't it is it is it rather would you rather have a hand engraving that is simpler or 
you know, less intricate, or a laser engraving that is significantly more so. That's the difficulty, isn't it? And the, the other difficulty is, is without trying to cover an action face using this amount of time, you could probably have a penny size. And that would probably be what I'd opt for, with, in hindsight, would be a plain action with a unbelievably stunning, you know, 50p piece inch circle of high quality engraving on each side would seem the logical use of time. But that just wasn't the fashion back then. Plain guns were not, not the thing. This was designed to be a baby B2G. And as such, it is a baby B2G. The only thing that differs on this entire gun from either a Brownie or a Maruku is the way the ejector kickers work. Because it is a Maruku action and Maruku ejector work, but with that unique Browning one piece forend, uh, and I can't show you them without taking it off. I probably should do. But and it doesn't really make that much difference. The kickers are a different geometry to either a Browning or a Maruku. That is the only really key difference in one of these to anything else, which can lead to issues if they break. Not that you can't have them machined, rewelded, made up or anything like that. So it's not something... And to be honest, they don't really break on Brownings or Marukus like they would on something like a Winchester, for example. Every 125 comes with 70 mil chambers. And they're not that overboard either. They're about 18.5 inside, although you'll find some slightly over that and some slightly under, as all barrels do. They're, they're normal, right? The bores themselves are finished to a very high standard, but they're not chrome lined, same as a 325 or a B25. So when you're buying one of these or looking at one of these, make sure the bores are not pitted because it's a very simple thing uh, to kill one of these, uh, however sad that, that may be. Uh, but it is true, it's a very simple thing to kill one of these. This particular one is a sporter. If we look at the rib, you've got the standard 13mm browning rib that tapers towards the back with the straight tram line down the middle and the edges on the sides. A, a fairly unexotic thing by all standards. I have seen fixed choke versions of these, but they are not particularly common. Uh, I've also seen game versions, but they are not as common as the sporter either. One presumes those shooting game in the early 80s still had the money for the B-25s, and to be honest, in the early 80s, a cyberside was still the favoured gun of choice by quite a long way. It's not like nowadays where you can take one of these into the field and no one bats an eyelid. It was still the case where people would be, well, less than positive, I suppose the phrase is, less than positive if you turned up with one of these on a shoot day. So the four grades, let me talk you through them and we'll show you pictures even though they're not pictures that we have of our guns now. Well. The first is an A grade, plain, boring action, nothing at all. The second is a B grade. As you can see, it's fairly simple. The B and the C grades are the most popular, and where the B grade ran for a couple of years before the, the range was expanded, you'll find a couple more of these about than Cs, although I've actually seen more Cs than Bs. Uh, the C is very similar, but there is more shading and a little bit, well, it's, it's a nicer finished gun on the outside. You rarely find better wood on one than the other, is what I found, is that most of them come with a fairly standard, what we would call grade five American black walnut. And the D grade is the particularly special one. Not many people actually stretch this, so they are the rarest of the lot, but they are rivaling a B sort of, a, a B2G plus in terms of engraving and finish. Very pretty indeed. What to look out for when buying one? Well, uh, like with any browning really, make sure they're not loose on the face because, well, these guns are now 40 odd years old. Uh, make sure that the, the strikers probably will be pitted because it's a browning, but just be aware that when you buy one, the chances of having to replace the mainsprings and firing pins are high, but that the cost is low so that it doesn't actually matter that much. The other thing to look out for, as with any American walnut stocks, is cracking. Any sort of a vicious bend or cracks or anything like that, they just are not as strong as potentially Turkish or French walnut, especially in the forend. As I've said, it's a slimline forend with quite deep uh, ejector kickers in there. So the wood is thin. And the same with any browning, just double check that you don't have any splits running up there. Not that it matters too much because they're not, you know, there's a little consequence you can get them fixed. But certainly around the headwork, looking up and down the trigger guard and around the top tang there, make sure there's no big cracks or obvious cracks or even unobvious cracks, depending on how much you'd like to look. The safety catch is unexciting, but it is selectable and the trigger is non-adjustable. How exciting is that? And it comes in gold because it's a browning. So what do we think overall of the B125B grade? Well, it's a strange one. Personally, and if it was my money, I would probably try and find a C. You know, for an extra three or 400 quid, you'll find a nice C grade over a B grade. And that would be my preference for looks. However, you really can't beat them for hand finishing and interest. However, they do feel funny because they are not, they don't really 
tickle your purest bit. They're not B25. And every time you pick up B25, it feels like a B25. This feels like a Maruku, but it looks like a B25. That's pretty much all I can say. Apart from that, they shoot and handle like most 80s Brownings pretty well. Quite lumpy and very calculated. The stock drops and dimensions on pretty much every B125 I've found are very, very good. You know, you've got a little bit more drop than standard, usually about one and a half to two and a quarter, but they actually put a little bit of cast on them as well back then. And uh, it's like coming home every time you pick one of these up. Uh, I learned on something quite similar to one of these, well, uh, late, late 80s GTI, which was oh, epic. And it has every part of that. You'll find slight differences in grip dimension from the first two years worth to the later ones, but not a huge amount, and you will obviously find differences between the game and the sporter. What you will also find, as I alluded to earlier, is that there are custom B25 A1s out there, but there is also a couple I have seen custom B125. So a 125 that has surpassed the grading system into sort of very special show off -y grades. I said earlier about the £2,000 mark, that doesn't really count for degrades. Degrades can sell for whatever they want because they're quite so rare and they are, well, a lovely, lovely gum. As I said, if you buy one, make sure you clean it. Nobody wants a pitted browning. And that is that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye. I hope you're safe, I hope you're well. And as always, be excellent to one another. Take care.